Hi, I'll be giving a quick introduction to MyVGL in the next few minutes. MyVGL is the free viewer application for projects created with Volume Graphics software. This includes VG Studio Max, VG Studio, and VG Metrology. We'll be starting with the options to open a project, then to a general overview of the user interface, and finally the most important information about analyses, measurements, and how to extract information out of MyVGL. To open a project, you can go to File, Open, or simply dragging and dropping the VGL file in the application. This is usually the most convenient for me. A window will pop out with the options to open the project or only import the datasets. Here, we want to choose Open Project most of the time because this includes all analyses and measurements that were performed to the datasets. Then, the software checks what exactly is in the project and you can now decide what you want to see and how the data should be loaded. This is very useful when you do not have the most powerful computer available, but still want to see the project. Here, you can see the memory needed to open the project and the RAM currently available in your system. As long as the required memory is highlighted in green, as it is now, you'll be able to open the project. On the other hand, if not enough memory is available, then you can reduce the resolution of the data here. One, two, or three voxels in each spatial direction are combined to form a voxel. You can directly see how this affects the memory required. It may not be noticeable here, but with large data sets you can quickly save several gigabytes of required memory. And if you're not interested in the gray value data at all, you can also unload it completely to work only on the surface data. You'll only have this option when an advanced surface determination has been calculated on the data. Please note that regardless of the resolution you choose to load the data, the results of the analyses and measurements remain unchanged. Even if you completely unload the gray value data, for example, the pores found in a porosity analysis are still displayed in the same way as with full resolution. I will now proceed to open the project at full resolution. By default, you get three 2D views and a 3D view of the data. The 2D views always show a section through the data set. The easiest way to see where this is located is by scrolling with the mouse wheel in one of the views. This will display the exact cutting plane in the other views. You can also click and drag the plane from the other views to change it to another location. Another way to move through the layers quickly is clicking here and sliding up or down. If you have found a position of interest, you can hover the mouse pointer over it, hold down the control key, and scroll with your mouse wheel to zoom in and out. If you want to see this point in the other 2D views, the easiest way to do this is to activate the navigation cursor, which is usually located here, and then hold down the control key and click. This will bring all 2D views to that location. This also works in the 3D view. Now, I would like to improve the contrast to better visualize the existing structures of the dataset. To do this, I first select the volume object here in the scene tree. You can find all objects and associated analyses here in the scene tree. After selecting the volume, you can now see its histogram in the rendering tool. This shows all the gray values of the dataset. Typically, we have the darkest voxels on the left and the brightest voxels on the right, and the vertical axis represents the quantity of voxels. Here, we can adjust the opacity curve to improve the contrast and change the visualization of the data. You also have presets here that can help you adjust the contrast automatically. For example, the Smart Contrast preset. Very nice. And if you prefer a linear contrast, you can select Ramp, we can also add opacity handles and adjust manually. When it comes to finding the points of interest in a project, 
you can benefit from using bookmarks, and perhaps some have already been prepared for the project. If the project includes bookmarks, you can find them here, and you will see a preview image of each. If a description has been added, it will be displayed when you hover the mouse over it. You can activate the bookmark simply by double-clicking it. For example, Bookmark 2 with the porosity hotspots. When double-clicking it, this adjusts all the views, the selections in the scene tree, and all the rendering settings. As you can see now, having bookmarks in the project can be very helpful to quickly point out interesting findings. All the manual search and visualization adjustments can be done beforehand for you. Let's now look at Bookmark 3. All the individual pores found are visible and these two analysis annotations point to the largest pores in terms of volume. When clicking on an analysis annotation in the scene tree, the 2D views will jump to the respective location, making it easy to find these pores. You can find annotations for all analyses. It's always a good idea to go through all of them in the scene tree regardless of whether they were set manually or automatically by the software according to certain criteria. You can also create your own annotations, no problem. You can simply select the analysis that you would like to annotate, then activate the analysis annotation here. Now you can set your own annotations by holding the control key and clicking in the 2D or 3D views. If you're wondering what else the analysis can tell you, you can open the dialog for an analysis by double-clicking it. The analysis dialogs are always structured in the same way. The first thing you see is the settings with which the analysis was calculated and the set tolerances. Then comes the Colors tab, on which you can adjust the color scale of the results. Then there are analysis-specific tabs in which the results are shown in detail. For example, there is a list of all defects found and their statistics, or the directional variability, in which you can see the porosity through individual layers. What about dimensions? If there are no measurements on your project, you can easily create your own using the help of the instruments. You can find them here. For example, distance measurement that can snap to the surface and will be placed in the scene tree under the volume you have selected. If the project includes dimensions and tolerances, you can find them here in the scene tree under the coordinate measurement section of the object. You can find different groups of dimensions and tolerances depending on the reference or coordinate system in which the measurements are made. Here we can see there are features in different coordinate systems and we can simply click on each one to bring all the views to that location. The color here indicates whether it is within or out of tolerance. For projects with many features, you can use these small double arrows to set a filter for the scene tree so that, for example, you can only see the features that are out of tolerance. You can also get an overview of the entire coordinate measurements by double-clicking the coordinate measurement section. Here, you can find both the table of all features and geometry elements. You know better than I what to look for here, so I'll move on. To better visualize your data, you can find different layouts here. You can also maximize any 2D or 3D window here, making it easier to see. Now you have a good overview of what is in the project and how to visualize the results. Maybe you would like to share some of this through a nice looking picture or video. This is easy using the Save Image or Movie here under File. But first, I will prepare my visualization and my layout. This is important because it will affect the options in the Save Image or Movie dialog. You can also create and save reports using the reporting tool. It can be found here. We can see there is a finished report already. I'll come back to that in a moment. First, 
I want to show you how to create a new report with everything that is in this project. We click Create here, then select all the checkboxes in the scene tree, and then create the report here. Now, we can select the report and open it. On the left, we can see everything that is in this report. This is very detailed and can be many pages long. To change the report, we can switch to edit mode here and customize the report the way you want it to be. For example, you can remove sections or modify the table columns. And finally, let's look at the report that came with the project. If you have any questions about any part of this video, please do not hesitate to contact us.